Today we've got amazing new gameplay from Crisis 3 and we'll bang our heads to Star Trek rock band. You were awesome in that. Thank you. Plus we're gonna talk NASCAR and kart racing with Danica Patrick and help you boost your rank in Halo 4. X-Play starts right now. Like super weird when we say that in the parking lot of a Home Depot next month. All you gotta do is when someone says Trabajo, you uh, say yes and you get in the truck. See. Si. There you si. go. Coming up on today's show, we've got new gameplay from Crisis 3. This is one of the prettiest shooters in Pretty Town. Uh, Crisis 3 this time around, a New York City has been turned into a rainforest full of enemies to kill and your weapon is a trusty compound bow. Because why not? Why not? Why wouldn't you have a compound bow? <laughs> Plus, we've got some Halo 4 Pro tips that will turn your clumsy Spartan into a ninja assassin. You will no longer be the victim of horrific teabaggings. And later, a very special, a very special X-Play classic. This one shows you what Star Trek Rock Band would look like. You remember when people actually cared about music games? Oh, those were the days. <laughs> it was so fun. But first, it's time for a new career. You know what would be fun? Race car driver. I could do that. No drinking and driving, though. I could, like, cover that for ESPN3. There you go. <laughs> uh, if you were famous like NASCAR driver Danica Patrick, mm -hmm. you could get gigs like starring in Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. And I'm guessing someone like Kristen Adams would probably interview you. And that is right. <laughs> Danica Patrick's trailer. First off, snacks. This is what champions eat, people. Here on the trailer, they have everything that they need for race day, which includes the suits for the entire crew. They're flame retardant, obviously, and they also wear flame retardant underwear, which makes sense, I guess. They have everything they need to rebuild a car, if necessary, like this beautiful engine. They've got parts, all kinds of parts. I have no idea what these things do, but they're heavy, and I'm sure they're expensive and they have grease on them, so they're authentic. But we've also got an entire cabinet of springs. It's like 20 pounds of coil right there. And something else very cool about this trailer is that there's an entire vehicle, a backup car, right above us. So Danica, we're here at the nice and toasty Texas Motor Speedway. Yes, it is it's hot a, in Texas. It's a burning hot November day. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so tonight you are racing in the Sonic cars. And everybody loves Sonic. It's, it's just a great character yeah. to just rally around. You guys yeah. get to be teammates in tonight's race. But in the game, you're not teammates because you're actually in the game. Yeah, I'm in the game. I'm, I'm myself in the game. And I'm really a fast, fast, fast car. So you're going to want to play <laughs> me either like as a plane, a boat, or on land. I'm a fast character. I win. Pick me. <laughs> this car up. You actually had some say in creating your avatar, is that right? Definitely. I mean, I had say in, you know, how it looked and the special powers it has, shooting flame balls. <laughs> so if I throw out some characters uh, within the Sega uh, world, can you give me the real life equivalent? For example, okay. Dr. Eggman. Okay. Who would that be? Brilliant but ruthless. Yeah. I would racer. like to think of myself as that a little bit. <laughs> I like it. The evil genius, Danica Patrick. I don't know if I'm a genius, but... <laughs> and then how about Tails? He's like the likable guy. Everybody loves Tails, but he's also a little annoying. I feel like that could be any Barry's person out there. <laughs> Maybe like no. Brad Keselowski. Um, let's throw him out. That, let's do that. You said it. <laughs> I'll just agree. No. Yeah, NASCAR nationwide, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Behind me is Danica Patrick's custom Sonic and All Stars Racing transformed car. I wonder what the ratio to convert horsepower to hedge power is. Carrots in, everybody, because it's about to get loud! All right, guys, that's it from Texas Motor Speedway. I'll see y'all later. Bye! The 
roster for Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed features a bunch of classic Sega characters who we haven't seen in action for a long time. Which made us nostalgic and uh, to dream up this X list, the top five Sega franchises we want to see come back. Coming in at number five is the Panzer Dragoon series. X-Play is at emotional crossroads, and we would welcome some dragons and some rail shooting. We would, we would. <laughs> number four is Streets of Rage. I really feel like we, we didn't learn enough about protagonists Adam, Axel, and Blaze, so we want to hear more of their story. Coming in at number three is Echo the Dolphin. Now I'm imagining what it would have been like to have Echo in the kart racing game, and I'm a little sad it didn't happen. Yeah, missed opportunity, Sega. I missed know. opportunity. Our number two pick is Fantasy Star. Sure, there are handheld games and a new free-to-play MMO, but not a proper old-school RPG for consoles, and that is what we want. Agreed. But the number one Sega franchise that needs to come back is... Shenmue. Mm -hmm. Technology has finally caught up with the game's ambitions. It needs a resurrection. Until then, Yakuza is as good as it's going to get. Mm -hmm. Not a bad option. Not a bad but option. Shenmue would be awesome. Yes. Uh, coming up on X Play, brand new gameplay from Crisis 3, which shows New York under a an entirely different kind of environmental assault. <laughs> Plus some pro tips to help you become a ninja master in Halo 4 multiplayer and a Federation approved X-Play classic. Get them while you can. We'll be right back. This portion of X-Play is brought to you by Rena Center, where the Rena Center Flex Plan gives you the freedom to get the brands you want. Double XP can help make you the master of Halo 4 multiplayer in no time. All you need to do is pick up a specially marked Mountain Dew, look under the cap, and enter the code printed there at DewXP.com. That will get you double XP matches, and it enables you to boost your rank faster. And leveling up unlocks some amazing specializations, like the ability to turn your Spartan into a freaking ninja assassin. <laughs> Halo 4 introduces brand new specializations to the game's multiplayer battlefield. In order for Xbox Live Gold members to earn these game-changing power-ups, they'll need brains, brawn, and lots of XP. First strike. So grab a Mountain Dew and unlock your double XP, then use these tips to get the most out of your powered-up points. After completing all 50 levels of your standard Spartan 4, you'll unlock the first of 10 unique specializations, wet work. In addition to cosmetic changes, which include new armor and weapon skins, the 10th level of wet work adds some badass bonuses. The armor mod transforms your seven foot tall Spartan into a stealthy space ninja, who now is able to sneak around the battlefield with muffled movement. The new suit also makes you harder for opponents to spot, thanks to its ability to limit visibility on Promethean vision. In addition to being virtually invisible, the Spartan upgrade also allows you to sprint faster and cuts down the amount of time it takes to perform an assassination. Assassination. If you want to be at the top of the leaderboards, unlocking wet work will help you get there. But it's going to take a lot of XP. So grab some Mountain Dew, log on to DoXP.com, and double up. Still on the way, we've got new gameplay from the graphics card Melting Shooter Crisis 3. Plus, we're going to remember the good old days and a very special X-Play classic. And it's not the one with the unfortunate trip to the bike shop. We'll be right back. <laughs>
This portion of X-Play is fueled by Mountain Dew. Gaming is better with Mountain Dew, so unlock and load double XP with Halo 4. Just get your hands on some Mountain Dew, find the code, and go to DewXP.com. Enter the code and dominate Halo 4 multiplayer. Unlock and load with double XP from Mountain Dew, Halo 4 double XP, and a chance to win other prizes at DewXP.com. disastrous weather that New York has had this year, a game like Crisis 3 actually doesn't seem that far-fetched. In this graphically stunning shooter, the Big Apple has been turned into a rainforest, and you get to kill a whole lot of stuff with a compound bow. <laughs> Let's talk about that right now. <laughs> The overgrown streets of New York provide the stunning battleground for Crisis 3. This next chapter in the famously processor-melting series features a post-apocalyptic Big Apple under alien invasion, and it's up to you to sweep the streets. Here's your first look at all the eye-bursting beauty in action. Joining us now is Mike Reed. He's the producer on the most beautiful game in the world, Crisis 3, everybody. Mike. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Mike, listen, the footage we're going to show right now, just to, to get it out there, this is running on a PlayStation 2094, right? Yes. There's no way... Like, what are you running this thing on? This is the most gorgeous game we have, and we've taken a consensus here, that we have ever seen. So we haven't actually announced the specs on this yet. Okay, now's a good is, time. Here you go. This is this is this is re this is running on PC specifically. Uh -huh. um, you know, we've really we've come back to the to the PC core and, and found really where we can push the hardware, and it it helps us in a lot of angles from from the Cry Engine and of course the game aspect as right. well. And as we can see, I mean, it is without question we are as close to to real life visuals as I think it is. I do a lot of compound bow, bow hunting in the jungle, and this looks eerily similar <laughs> I to how I spend my weekends. Uh, but tell me tell me where we are actually in the, the crisis uh, series, especially after two, we you know, we had all this overgrown stuff going on in two. Where are we now in crisis? So, three? of course, the third installment in the crisis series, yeah. um, you know, rolling back to crisis one was a very, uh, you know, had a lot of very open kind of references back in the jungle and, and uh, you know, the introduction of the nano suit and the characters. Um, crisis two took us into New York City, which, uh, you know, was being, was under a, uh, was under attack by the South. And uh, so coming back into character, but a character that's well-known in the Crisis series by the name of Prophet. Uh -huh. So, um, Prophet has, uh, it's been a long span between 20 years from Crisis 2 to Crisis 3, okay. but we've, we've introduced, we've re reintroduced Prophet. Um, he's really, he's really our main protagonist, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, in this new demo, we have Psycho, mm -hmm. who's another well-known character from the Crisis right. series. And Not Crisis very well-adjusted, this Psycho fellow. Uh, <laughs> no, he's had... He's had uh, psychos. Psychos had some uh, some big problems over the years, right. and the one thing people will notice is he's missing his nano suit now. Okay. So, uh, it, which is a very painful and mentally scarring process. So he's a little bitter about the whole thing, and uh, he's joined up with a rebel group inside the dome itself, mm -hmm. and uh, he, they basically busted Prophet out to try to help the rebels. But Prophet's being driven by. Uh, some other things that's, okay. that's going on in there. Something, something bigger. The end of the world. The end of uh, mankind. And uh, so he's playing kind of two, two oh. sort of angles here. So not a lot of rainbows in this game. No, definitely not. Definitely not a lot of rainbows. Right. Uh, but as we've seen, you know, in any crisis game, one of the main attractions is the weaponry in the game. What else can we expect to see as far as weaponry? So I mean, the bow has really become a focal point, and uh -huh. it was something we came back to with having the jungle elements and being be, the hunted becoming the hunter. Mm -hmm and uh, really rolling us back into the jungle again. So we wanted something that fit in with that whole theme. And of course, the cloaking the cloaking aspect of it as well. Sure. Uh, so the bow fit in with that very well. Uh, so we've, we've really made that a focal point. But in other weapons, we've added in some, some, some brand new weapons, some, some new systems uh, in the way that the weapons operate, mm -hmm. such as attachments and whatnot. Really wanted to provide uh, a deeper, rich gameplay uh, to, for players to choose the way that they want to do things. Yeah, and that was one of my favorite things. I mean, Crisis 
Genesis 2 was one of my favorite games when it came out, uh, amongst the other games that came out around its time. And my favorite thing to do was every new situation I approached to kind of like cue up the, you know, the visor and say, this is how I want to do this thing. And we've heard multiple times in reference to Crisis 3 that this is a thinking man's shooter. And that's how I felt Crisis 2 was as well. So how did you improve upon on that premise? Because Crisis 2 was very much like, choose your own adventure and I, it looks like this is going to be the same thing right so we're finishing sort of a, a story bubble in what we have in the in the trilogy from one two and three so we kind of came back to crisis one and two really looked at the greatest gameplay aspects we could find in there not only not only from the gameplay side but also from the environments the visuals mm -hmm. and really finding a middle ground in between the two mm -hmm. and what is one of the things you, you felt that your team needed to focus on the most i mean crisis two visually stunning critically what very well received what is your you say, listen, this is the one thing that maybe we didn't do as well as we wanted to. Let's make sure we get it right in Crisis 3. And that's just it. I mean, we're always trying to improve it, but we don't want to come back and really rip the franchise down sure. and then build it back up again, because sure. that would not be Crisis and mm -hmm. people wouldn't be familiar with it. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's it's not really one specific thing, but it's everything from the environments to the visuals, to the gameplay, to the audio, to even the character, even the way the characters interact in uh -huh. the game. And uh, you brought up earlier, you know, that you are really massaging what a PC can do with this footage right here. Very much so. uh, you know, and, and your your game has always served as kind of like a, a, a kind of a flagstone for PC gamers. Like this is what PC gaming could be and then console gaming as well. PC gaming community, very vocal about what they want. Uh, I'm sure that you guys heard a lot about what they wanted to see in Crisis 3. What's the one thing the community was really asking of you guys in making this game? So, th I mean, there, there's a number there's a number of things from, from the multiplayer side and mm -hmm. from the single player side. And uh, we have a great team in Crytek UK that's been focusing on the multiplayer aspects of it. Uh, we did a closed alpha recently, which was very, very well received. Uh, so I think we're on the right track there. Um, in terms of that, I mean, P PC gamers specifically, they, you know, it, it's almost like they want a reason to upgrade their hardware. Uh -huh. And we want to give that to them. And it not only helps us in what we do in building the game out, but uh -huh. also, I mean, we have the, the Cry Engine's really at the core of our technology. And having that in-house is very powerful for us. And taking that further and going in with the, uh, with our, helping out our licensees as well, I mean, but using this as a, as a platform for it is uh, has really helped us push that forward. As we've seen by this footage today, you have now given them more reason to spend more money on their, their PCs, man, because this game looks amazing. Big round of applause for Mike, everyone, for being on the show. Thank yeah, you so thank much you. for your time, man. Really appreciate it. Crisis 3 is in stores on February 28th. I'm going to take it on a date, because it's pretty. <laughs> Send it back over the morning. After the break, we'll set our phasers to metal for our next play classic. And I promise you, the puns in our Star Trek rock band bit are way better than that one. We'll be right back. This portion of X-Play is brought to you by Sony. Share the season, share Sony. Life is a game. But until there's a manual... There is X-Play. Everyone plays X-Play. Weeknights at 6.30, only on G4. approaching, we figured it would be a good time for another X-Play Classic. For us, it's kind of like that scene in Lethal Weapon where Riggs is looking at a picture of his dead wife. Mm -hmm. In this bit of nostalgia, we asked the question, what if there was a Star Trek expansion for rock band? Hilarity and Spock years and suits. Go where no music game has gone before. Star Trek Rock Band. Hello, I'm Patrick Stewart. Star Trek Rock Band combines the most nerdiest fictional universe ever created and fake plastic instruments into a feeding frenzy of music. Engage! Everybody rock, everybody shout. When she crushes name, Data said, knock you out. Huh. Out. Huh. Out. Every game includes lovingly handcrafted instruments. Guitar, bass, drums, microphone, and ceremonial batleth. Captain, this Romulan bass guitar is very high-quality craftsmanship. Speak when spoken to, Franks. Play through the massive 238-song playlist with hits like... Oh, 
Punk it up with Anarchy in the UFP. Anarchy in the UFP. Anarchy in the UFP. Anarchy in the UFP. Oh! And who can forget this one? Cling on me softly with his song. Cling on me softly with his song. Why can't Shatner and TK get along? Cling on me softly with his song. Stunning authentic Star Trek venues. SETI Alpha 5. Sick Bay. And Hollow Deck Victoria London. Captain, why are we in Victorian London? You're an ass flakes. Makla 5.1 digital surround sound. Makla. You're my number one, and I love you, sure. But damn, that beer has got to go. Get Star Trek Rock Band today. Because purchasing any other interactive music technology this winter solstice would be illogical. Available wherever nerds are found. Rock on and prosper. Tomorrow on X-Play, Mario is back, and this time everyone's favorite plumber is in high def. Find out if new Super Mario Bros. U for the Wii U is a game changer. Plus, we'll have reviews of all the biggest fall games, including the Daniel Craig spy game 007 Legends and Disney Epic Mickey 2 The Power of Two. I want to forget about what we just saw and go back to the, the Star Trek thing. Um, you guys actually, no green screen, right? That was all on location? Oh, yeah, we actually went to the sick bay. Oh, and Absolutely. Victoria and London. Well, you know, Holodeck makes it easy. We, we used to spend so much money on this show. I know. Unbelievable. I know, those ears were at least seven, eight cents. <laughs> hey, speaking of spending money, later in the week, we send Kristen Adams to a helicopter and she fires machine guns from it. Why didn't I get to go? Uh... <laughs>